Good morning, Yuan. Good morning. How are, How are you? you today? Excellent. Excellent. Great to have you with us. Welcome, everyone, to another SportWorks Talks. Um, great to have you with us on another beautiful day here in the Olympic capital. Uh, sun is shining and uh, we're starting to, things are starting to ease as, as people relaxed over a long weekend a little bit more, which is nice to see. Uh, how are you? How is it where you are today, Yuan? It's fine. I mean, weather is not great, but uh, but it's good that uh, you know rules are relaxing uh, about COVID. So so we we're, we're allowed to go outside. <laughs> it, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a pleasant change, isn't it? It's a big surprise. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so welcome everybody. Great to see you all joining. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, uh, please, as always, drop your notes in. Say hello in, in the chat. Feel free to say hello and tell us where you are from around the world. Uh, it's great to see where you're from. Hello, Germany. Hello, Lausanne. Hello, Philippines. Uh, great to have you oh, with us. Um, so, uh, a little bit of housekeeping uh, for those of you who haven't joined us for a SportWorks Talks. Uh, our presentation runs for about 20 minutes this morning. Yuan's going to give us a great presentation uh, on uh, social business and the importance and the how and why. Uh, and then after that, we're going to then have 20 minutes of Q&A. Uh, so what we ask is that if you have any questions pop up during the presentation, please just pop them in the chat. Uh, we'll mark them as a question, and then we'll go back to them at the end of the presentation and do our best to answer as many as possible. So, without further ado, hello, welcome from Paris. Uh, good to see you, uh, and uh, thanks for joining us. So, I'm going to hand over to Yuan and enjoy the presentation. Thank, thank you so much, Christian. Thank you so much, and thank you for everybody to attend to attend uh, this event. I I, uh, I really feel proud to uh, to be here and to be part of the lineup of the sports web talk. You know, it always feels that we are. Uh, the, the the small guys at the table, <laughs> and it feels good that's what, that way. Um, if uh, if you have the presentation, Christian, okay, perfect. So and I can move the slides around here, so that's perfect. Everything ready. Uh, I do, of course, also feel small at the table when I need to present this guy, <laughs> Professor Yunus. Uh, for those who don't know him. Is the person that has created in uh, in the seventies the microcredit concept, um, and uh, he was awarded in two thousand and six the Peace Nobel Prize for it. And during these, let's say, these seventy years of uh, this, sorry, these thirty years of uh, you know internationalization of the concept, because today microcredit is really uh, uh, there is a microcredit program in in most of the countries in the world. Well, during that 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 whole thirty years and that whole process of inter internationalization, Professor Yunus has realized that what he has done was much more than creating a bank to solve, uh, you know, the problem of access to credit. Because at the end of the day, microcredit is the fact of lending very small amount of money to very poor people for entrepreneurial purpose. What he had done uh, by extension of the microcredit concept was really to create uh, a, a real uh, new kind of business that was dedicated more generally to solve problem. So from, you know, that Grameen back experience where he started as an economic teacher in the, in the, one of the, the, in the second university of the country in Chittagong, uh, and decided to take his student on field trips because he was frustrated about, you know, the teachers teaching novel theories of economics, you know, the invisible hands of the market, the, the demand and the, the offer. But in fact, in the village next door, there were people dying from hunger. He took his student in field trips um, and to make them analyze what, what, what were the roots of poverty. Um, and that's how the whole story of microcredit started uh, lending people by people very small amount of money to make them to make them grow and take make take them out of the circle of poverty so when he decided to and when he got very excited about the fact that by creating a business you could actually solve a problem and when professor Inus gets excited that gets quite prolific um, well what happened is that he created more than 60 of these businesses and in Bangladesh only. Uh, so 
you think about any problem in the world, like access to safe drinking water, access to access to telecommunication, lack of nurses in, in hospital, you name it. Every time there was a problem, Professor Yunus was creating a business to solve it. And he has created businesses that are, uh, you know, nationwide businesses in Bangladesh. Uh, the biggest telecom company, the biggest uh, 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 nursing school, the biggest water distribution company. And there is a common denominator to all of these businesses, which is that a, they aim to solve a problem, and B, there is no distribution of dividend, meaning that all of these businesses are created and you know pay salary, pay expenses, get income, have a profit, so profit is authorized, but all the profit is plus back into the company at the end of the year to, to, uh, to increase their impact. So if you take social business, as a definition by Professor Yunus, it is a non-dividend business to solve a social environmental problem. If you compare that to a traditional business, the difference is that it has a social goal. And if you compare it, and this is important, if you compare it to a charity or NGO, it is different of a charity or NGO in the sense that it is self-sustainable. It uses business techniques to sustain itself. So if you look into a, a nice way of putting, it, of, of putting it that Professor Yunus has is that he says that the charity dollar has one life. You know, it does a great job. It goes out, uh, but it never come back. Once it's used, it does not come back. On the other side, in social business, when you invest one dollar, because there is a self-sustainable model behind the organization, the money gets recycled. So it has endless lives, infinite money, if you wish. <laughs> Pretty cool concept. <laughs> uh, I have a, 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 a very small video to, to, to keep things short on, on who is Professor Yunus. It, it gives you a, a bit of, a, of the dimension of what he has done and the, the person that he is. So Christian, if you could play the video. think creating a world without poverty is impossible, let's do it. If you think zero unemployment is impossible, let's do it. If you think zero net carbon emission is impossible, let's do it. Because all impossibles will be possible. All right, we're back in. Well, when you see that, 
uh, when you see uh, uh, the achievements of Professor Inus, you uh, you understand as well the potential of one individual um, and uh, what uh, how we believe that you know wherever you are, where, whatever your organization is, you can make a difference. Uh, and that's one of the reasons, actually, why it does not really matter to be the small guys at the table. Actually, Professor Yunus has always been, you know, used to that uh, when he started in the banking area. He did not know anything about banking. And he said it himself, if I knew anything about banking, I would not have been able to create a grand bank. Um, and, uh, you know, he's <laughs> on that picture is clearly a small guy at the table. <laughs> and you must ask yourself, what? is the link uh, you know between what i just said and why why am i talking about that what is the link to sport <laughs> uh, basically what is that whole concept of social business bringing to the table um and as Prof professor Yunus is showing here on the picture it's uh, it's bringing three things so at least uh, what we think is when you see when you analyze what problem solving is on one side and one sport what sport is and you you cross them over uh, there is at least three main areas on which uh, uh, we can focus to to to, to solve problems uh, in and through sport. The first thing um, is, uh, of course, how can we solve problems in sport? We generally tend to think about sport about a fantastic way to uh, to to solve problem. You know, uh, the sport has the power to change the world. You know, this kind of of, of spirit. But what we must not forget is that there is also a huge amount of thing to be changed in sports as well, because it's also somehow a catalyst of problems. You know, when you take problems like, you know, sexual harassment in sport, mental struggle in sport, gender inequality, racism, violence, human traffic, exclusion, all of these problems exist in sport. And what we're trying to bring to the table um, is not necessarily create program to uh, specifically address some parts of the consequences but rather think into a business engine into uh, into a self-sustaining machine that would structurally solve these problems if you take an, one of the the problems in sport uh, wealth distribution um and and athletes financial struggle if you think about athletes generally people think about like millionaires athletes but what we need to remember is that to make one millionaire we need you know a few thousand of people earning nothing and not sustaining themselves um and and actually there's a second aspect to it which is generally we tend to think that athletes financial struggle are rather in the in the countries that are developing countries and not necessarily in developed economies but if you take uh, some of the sources, um, it says that 86% of college athletes in the US live below poverty line. It says that 50% of the French athletes that were sent to the Rio 2016 games were living below poverty. So it's a structural problem. Um, and what I would like to show uh, is one great solution that has been brought by the IOC. It's a great initiative called the Athlete 365 Business Accelerator, and which is part of the athlete support platform of the IOC, the Athlete 365, where basically the idea is to have a program to empower athletes and Olympians on around the world, on all five continents, to become entrepreneur as a dual career, meaning during their career, or as a career transition opportunity. The idea of the IOC is to buy, provide them the skills, to provide them the tools, to provide them maybe the access to funding so that they can start their own business and design their own financial freedom. And structurally, when you think about it structurally, if you empower athletes at their level to become self-sustainable by creating a business as a way to finance their career or their career transition, then you kind of structurally solve the problem of athletes' financial struggle at least for those who, who, who manage to do it. But, 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 but this is already a very strong start and a structural uh, uh, solution to that problem. So I just wanted to show you a very quick video. Christian, if you could put the second video, it explains a bit the launch of the program and, 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 and the, the more the spirit behind it. 
Welcome to Athlete 365 Business Accelerator. You are an athlete. As an athlete, you compete. You have the power to overcome odds, to make sure you are at the top. Sports is something you enjoy, but at the same time, your creative power is still there. Use that creative power, create businesses. And along the way, you create social businesses, business to solve problems. As an athlete, you can be an entrepreneur too. Athlete doesn't mean that you have to give up entrepreneurship. And you can do things which others can't do, not the way you do it. So don't forget that you have a very special quality among all the human beings. Perseverance. Endurance. Competition. Discipline. Determination. Empowerment. Leadership. Excellence. Dedication. Innovation. Conscience. Patience. Stamina. Creativity. Impact. Achievement. Fun. Grit. Discovering yourself. Joy. Freedom. The real you. There. Let's go. Let it come out. This course tell you about that. We have designed this online course together with many experts to empower you as an athlete to start your own business. In this online course, we want to help you to identify a problem that you want to solve. Then we're going to take you on a journey how to build an idea based on this problem and how you actually build a business model all around this idea. Finally, of course, it's about how you run this business and there finance will play an important role. You will get several assignments and tests and work on your business idea together with us. I'm John Hall. I'm Abhinav Bindra. I'm Nadine Dawani. I'm James Tompkins. I'm Danny Ayurta. I'm Kirsty Coventry. I'm Yelena Isenbay. I am Aya Medani. I'm Danka Bartekova. We would all like to encourage you to take this course because we believe it will help you build your career after your retirement. You'll enjoy it. You'll have fun and you let me know how much fun you had. Okay, I think there was a bit of a delay. <laughs> uh, I still hope that you liked my acting skills, <laughs> dedication. <laughs> All right. So this is one example of what can be done. And the IOC gave a, a, a very great example of what can be done in the sense of, of, of uh, structurally uh, solve one problem that, that, is, uh, that is really directly affecting at least. Um, so we've seen on one side uh, the idea of uh, solving problems in sport, but of course, sport is is uh, is not only a land of problems; it's a land of fantastic opportunities. And you know, you uh, more than anybody and more than myself know the fantastic power that sport has to uh, to change people's life. And what we're trying to bring on the table uh, is how do we go further than sport and how do we bring more than sport you know we want to see the power of sport as much more than just you know sending some balls to in a poor country and say that you know the sport will change the the the, 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 the people's life what are the true power of sport because if we want if we say that sport has the power to change the world we need to activate that power so what are these true power well, if you look a bit uh, uh, about, if you look a bit in in this uh, in this sector, you realize that at least three of these power are really prominent. The first one is the economic power of sport. You know, sport is a one point three trillion dollar business. Uh, it's a lot of money. <laughs> um, and how can we? you know direct that it's a good news at the end of the day because the, that money only exists because sport is here it would not exist otherwise how do we use and how do we direct it toward the right direction and this is the bet that paris 2024 is doing and i would like to give a fantastic example of the work of paris 2024 in that aspect which is the idea behind the ESS 2024 program, which ba uh, means Economie Sociale et Solidaire, basically uh, uh, Social Business 2024, it is that we have 7 billion euros to organize the games. Uh, 7 billion euros that will go to products and services that will be used for the organization of the games. Well, 
How do we do within the 7 billion euros, which is a huge budget for five weeks? In five weeks, we will spend what we generally spend in the full year for the city of Paris. This is city of Paris budget. So we will spend it in five weeks. But this is a great opportunity if we manage to maximize the amount of that money that goes to social business suppliers. How do we maximize that share? I give you an example. If you take the food for the athletes, we will have to feed 14,000 athletes during the Olympics for three weeks. It's a lot of food. <laughs> and of course, quite a, a, a big budget. We can do it with the standard catering company, but we can also do that with social business catering company that will only work with refugees or long-term unemployed people or will only source from poor farmers locally. So you will have the exact same product, which is the food, but a completely different impact. Um, and, and this is what this program is about. So it's not about helping and about giving the privilege to social businesses, but rather empowering them and making them more competitive between now and the game so that they are ready to win markets when the tenders are out. So it's a program to help social economy sector to take advantage of the games. Uh, and if you are interested in more detail of that, we can, we can go through it during the questions afterwards. If you take uh, another, another of the big prop power of sport, the gathering power is something extremely strong. You know, the IOC number is that half the planet, half the planet Earth is watching at the games, uh, or, or more precisely, the opening ceremonies of the games. It's a huge amount of people. And if you take that to the local level, it also translates into, you know, whenever there is a sport infrastructure in a place where there is not necessarily any sport infrastructure, it gathers people and specifically young people. And this is what the Agora program is about. The Agora program, it's basically a self-sustainable center, sport center made out of recycled container. It's located in one of the most, uh, in the poorest district of Abidjan, the most deprived district of Abidjan. And the idea here is how do we gather young people around sport, but only as an excuse to provide them access to economic opportunity and by basic services. Meaning that these young people will come and play basketball and how do we direct it, direct him or her towards uh, you know, access to a micro business incubator, access to micro credit to finance the micro business ID that he has, access to very affordable uh, uh, healthcare services, access to very affordable eye care services. So the Agora provides access to all of that. It provides access to these young people through sport, with sport only as a vehicle to many more things that he has not had a chance to have access to just because he was born in this, in this specific district. And the great thing about this concept and this program is that this is a self-sustainable, financially self-sustainable center, meaning that all of these containers that you see on the picture, they are held by small business owner, whether it's, a, you know, the business incubator or the microcredit, the all small business owner will pay a rent and this rent is paying for the maintenance of the center. Meaning that once this center has been built, this, and it's a very, if you compare it to the rest of the sport for development infrastructure, it's really affordable, really, uh, uh, really simple as well, really compact. Once this has been built, it is self-sustainable. Nobody needs to put any more money on the table. And this is really important when you talk about long-term sustainability. And the last example of, of the power of sport is, of course, the influential power. Uh, you know, athletes have been endorsing brands for years and years. And, and uh, you know, if Leo Messi tells you to buy some shoes, you know, high are the chances that you will do so. <laughs> um, and what we're trying to do here is, uh, you know, and, and we're not reinventing the wheel. I mean, athletes have been, you know, uh, endorsing good causes for years. What we are trying to bring here is how does that translate into self-sustainability in itself, meaning that the involvement of the athletes will actually create a movement that will structurally change the society. And this is a very good example is what Shikar Uberoi is doing 
Uh, she's the number one, she's been, sorry, the number one tennis player in India for years. She, she was training in the US. She was a real star in India. Um, and she's now host of a TV show that is a bit like the Shark Tank, you know, like invest into social businesses. So, so when she endorsed that, she's not only, of course, you know, having an impact directly and, and, and showcasing those great examples, but more deeply, she's, she's making social business part of the popular culture because young people will see that and will want to get involved into that. And, and this is how you actually start to create structural changes in the society. We've talked about solving problems in sports. We've talked about solving problems through sports. And let's be honest here. I mean, we are not, when I say that, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to, see, to talk about what we are bringing to the table while bringing problem solving. We're not bringing anything new. Uh, let's be 100% clear and honest. You know, there is one sector that has been solving problems through sport, in sport, for decades and is doing that in a fantastic way. And this is the sport for development sector. Uh, these organizations are doing a fantastic job. They, are, they have a fantastic impact. They are doing a fantastic work. They know their beneficiaries so well. They are committed to the problem they address. They are deeply rooted in local communities. They know how to influence local communities. So, so they are fantastic. W there is absolutely nothing wrong about sport for development sector, actually only good things about it. What needs to be improved though, because sport for development sector is coming to a tipping point, what needs to be improved is the model itself on how it is financed. Uh, because today, most of the NGOs in that sector are financed, well, by definition, by grants and by donation which is, when you think about it, quite a problem when it comes to dependency. Because of course, when you depend on a donator, you will depend, I mean, your con the continuity of your program will depend on the financing or not from this donator. But deeper, if you think about the system itself and how it organizes itself, you generally need a fundraiser to get the money, meaning that you are paying somebody to go and take some money. <laughs> which is a bit of an odd system. And if you go one layer up, uh, generally the fundraising system does not come straight from the initial financer to the bottom to the beneficiary. It comes through different layers of, of uh, different organizations that are, of course, taking a bit of a chunk of this money inside. So, so when you arrive at the bottom uh, and at the, at, the, at the grassroots level, there's a lot of that money that has gone for you know, fundraising, for impact measurement, for monitoring and control, and and you know all of that. So it, th th there's definitely some things to be to be improved in terms of self sustainability and making this model more efficient. And and if you go to the to the bottom line even of what an NGO is created for, whenever there is money involved, it never comes for free. <laughs> so that means that there may be conditions, you know, the very small letters at the bottom of the contracts. <laughs> um, there is high, ch high chances, I mean, not high chances, but, but, but you can be exposed to the risk of mission drift because you will need to adapt your activities and the way you operate because or in the sense of the donator. Again, we're not reinventing the wheel. There are great organizations out there already being involved in self-sustainability even even if it's only a part of of their budget you know it does uh, social starting to be transitioning from the ngo model to the social business model is something that takes time it is, it is not something that is simple nor something that is from one day to another but if you have only 25 percent of your budget that is you know uh, 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 sustained through self self-sustainable uh activities then it can change it can change a lot i gave i gave here three examples but if i had to only explain one the amigos del mar project for me is fantastic it's you know the standard ngo surf based education program they educate kids in very poor district in a very poor island of colombia through surfing uh, you know informal schooling uh, you know uh, great values providing you know pathway to employment so the the, the basic uh, 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 the basic NGO that you can think about, the, the way they do that is very interesting. A part of their 
financial model is to produce and sell surf, surfboard parts made out of recycled waste collected on the, on, on the beach, uh, recycled plastic. So you can think about these young people going and take you know, uh, plastic was on the beach, making it a surfing, using it for their, their surf lesson, and actually even selling it to the surfboard, uh, to the surfing federation of Colombia, which is a fantastic virtuous model, you know, a virtual circle. Um, so, so let's say this is, this is, uh, some, these are just some examples, but it shows that it already exists and it's not that complicated. Although it's a process that takes time, it's not that complicated. And I understand that I'm a bit over time now. Uh, so trying to wrap up, uh, if I have to give one call to action for all of you is social business can be implemented anywhere as we're seeing in, in sport. I mean, it's been in, 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 uh, implemented in all the sector. We're now trying to, you know, to bring it to sport and to promote it and implement it to sport. And whoever you are in the sports sector, you can get involved. If you are an athlete, you can start a business to finance your career and get, you know, a self-sustainable income rather than uh, depending on the grants of your government that may not even come because of a situation like we are seeing today, you know, with COVID. Uh, you can use the, your influence in the, in the right direction. You can start even at the higher level of engagement. You can start even a social business to solve problems that pisses you off in the society. Um, in terms of sport organizations, we have great example of federation, club, event organizers, sport governance bodies that are actually using their core competencies to solve problems. And, and this is really applicable to absolutely all of the organizations. If you are in the sport for development sector as well, you know, find sustainable business model to sustain your social activities. On the long term, it will pay off. It's really important. And if you're an investor, this is more important still you have a fantastic power to have philanthropic, philanthropic potential. You have money that you can give away. Instead of giving it away, invest it. Invest it in a self-sustainable way because this money, it can, do, it can not only be used once, as Professor Yunus, it can be used endless time. So if the organization in which you invest are self-sustainable, you can not only you know, use that money and that money get recycled at the, at the level of the organization, but you, you can also take back that money and reinvest it again. So you're creating a very virtual circle of money and you're creating, a, a, you know, again, a infinite money, which is pretty cool, a pretty cool concept. <laughs> so I'm over, I'm, I'm leaving here, you here with a great quote from uh, this, great, uh, this great guy. <laughs> um, and please, 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 please get in touch. Uh, it's very important. If you want to get involved into that, get in, get in touch. We're super open to discussion to any one of you. Thank you so much, and thank you, Christian, for uh, for uh, inviting me, and thank you for your attention. Johan, great presentation. Thank you so much. Um, as always, uh, it, we were, were for those of us who, who were here in the beginning of the year. Um, we were very fortunate to have uh, Professor Yunus actually visit us here in Lausanne and uh, gave one of the first World Works talks for the year. Um, so incredibly inspiring and incredibly um, moving. Um, the concept of social business, uh, it, it seems like it, it seems quite new, but actually it's been around for some time. What I'm impressed by is the way in which you're now presenting this. And, and you, you kind of laugh at it as you said it, but, you know, use the one dollar, but use it again. You know, let's create those virtual, virtual cycles. And uh, I, I think it it's really is truly inspiring. Um, the work you're doing. Um, uh, with Professor Yunus, um, and certainly always, every time we come away from these presentations and our discussions, um, I'm always thinking, all right, okay, how can we do this? So it's great. So thank you. Um, now I'm going to drop into some questions, great questions popping into the chat. Thank you for those. Um, I'm going to go back to the very beginning. I've got one here from Max Donner. I'm not sure we can answer this, but we might be able to point you in the right direction. It's a question of, is there a list of Olympians who work for banks that have resources to lend to social businesses in sport? Um, no. 
Yeah, yes, I'm asking the same question. I would like to have this information. <laughs> uh, great, great question, Max. Thank you. Yeah, for great, thank you, Max. <laughs> Please, if, you, if, if you find one, let, tell us. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take that one away. We'll we'll see what we can find in in in, in the offline and see if we can help you with that one. Um, question here from Michelle. Um, so how could international federations create and implement programs designed to develop social business in favor of athletes? Uh, what kind of resources, financial, operational, or human are needed to do this? Um, I mean, as I said, the, the very simple answer to that question is any, uh, any organization can get involved. Uh, it's, you know, the, 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 at the end of the day, the the so, social business is no because it uses the the business techniques is no different from any other kind of business. So what what you need to start with is scope really well the problem. So if it's about you know athlete support, then of course you need to scope exactly what is needed and why you are doing it. Uh, in terms of resources, there's plenty plenty of things out there. I mean, there's even the the the, the Program the IT that I mentioned that is a uh, you know uh, 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 that is golden in terms of resources because the work has already been done, and it really depends on what you're trying to achieve. If it's you know self sustainability through entrepreneurship, if it's some of these model that we are seeing in the in the last um, in the last few weeks with COVID with solid solidarity fund uh, from athletes to athletes, which is also a great and very self sustainable and really let's say, structural solution to one of the problems, I must say. Uh, so, so it really depends on, on, uh, on what, is, what, is, uh, what is trying to be achieved. Um, and, uh, and it is a process, you know, that, that, that is very organized and, very, and quite simple at the end of the day. But you really need to know exactly what, you, what you're trying to achieve. I don't know if it answers the question. There is no, you know, one, uh, one, uh, one solution to fit all... Uh, all uh, all these initiatives, but uh, but I think the process to go through it is always the same. So I guess one of the questions may be a follow up to that. You've obviously got a great list of of um, case studies. I found that the case, just those three examples you gave. Maybe there's some examples that we can share uh, follow in follow up um, to help. Absolutely. An example, just to give examples of how federations perhaps have implemented. So, but it's a good question. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely, and, and feel free to you, you have my contact. Feel free to uh, I, I, I'm absolutely uh, you know happy to to go in more detail. Great. Um, so the next question here: um, Has any approach been made to any of the the FANGS for cooperation? I'm going to have to be played a bit a little bit ignorant here. Um, definition of fangs. Um is that something? I, no, I don't know either. I've dropped that question back to you, so we'll, we'll, we'll go on to the next and hopefully we get a clarification of that one. Sorry. Sorry I'm not up on that. I know most acronyms, but I live in a world of acronyms, but I'm not going to be able to hopefully get a bit clearer. Um, so a question here from uh, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, most grants available in sports and development are for established organizations with a track record over at least two years. So where can a social business in sports look to find seed funding? Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, let's say the great thing about about you know the NGOs, the NGO sector, and one of the reasons why there is absolutely no point in reinventing the wheel, meaning like you know creating a side sector of social business as opposed to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to the NGO sector and the sport for development sector that is already existing and have such a great impact, is that all of these organizations already a strong uh, have a strong track record. So it's not about you know creating social businesses on the side. It's uh, the record of these organizations is still there. It's just the way that they will use the money that will be slightly different. So I give you an example. If you are an NGO and you ask for financing, uh, there is a the programmatic financing, which is you invest absolutely everything into the program. But if you think into the financing in terms of developing an activity that could even apply, be applied to a program, but developing an activity and buying or purchasing assets that goes towards the direction of self-sustainability, then this is when you start operating the change. You know, so I give you, like, I was giving the example as well of uh, of uh, of Kick for Life in Lesotho. Um, 
Keep for Life, basically what they have done, they have used some, some of the grants that they were uh, awarded uh, for, if I remember well, if I, and if I'm not mistaken, for the 2010 World Cup. And they invested it into the creation of a center for hospitality, meaning that they are now able to attract sport tourism from all around the world. And through that money that they get, they finance the social activities that they have. So it's not that it's a different NGO. It's not that they need a different kind of funding. It is just that uh, they chose to direct that funding towards, uh, uh, you know, the, the generation of a self-sustainable activity. Okay. So I hope that helps, helps, helps clarify that one for you, Rachel. Um, so the next question uh, from Gert, uh, how can an NGO transform its philanthropic potential into a social business model? Examples so, of that, perhaps. Yeah, so, so when I, the philanthropic potential, I, I would say that it's more one layer above, it's more at the investor level. Uh, uh, let's say the, the NGO has the potential to, uh, to attract uh, philanthropic uh, 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 funds, uh, but does not have in itself a, a philanthropic, philanthropic potential. What, what I mean by, you know, uh, uh, transform the philanthropic potential into a social business model, it is just the way that investors invest into NGOs, into sport NGOs. And it can be done in, you know, in two ways. There is, you know, the fact that you just say, okay, today what I'm doing, I get the money from the top and I'm investing it to the bottom. And today, in most of the cases, what happens is that it is invested into something, into a program of an NGO. It, it does a great job. The NGO uses it for whatever purpose it is that they are, uh, you know, uh, doing. But then it never comes back. It is, it is spent, but never comes back. What we're saying is that there are two potential here. The first thing is that to say to the NGO, use it to create a self-sustainable generating model meaning that the money will be invested and at the level of the NGO, it will create self-sustainability because there will be self-sustainable uh, gener uh, revenue generating activity that will be created. And the second thing, even if you go one step further, if you are at the, you know, if you are the, the level of the investor, you can, once this project becomes self-sustainable, you can actually take that money back as well. So you are also creating self-sustainability at the level of the, uh, the the investor, meaning that how can an NGO transform its philanthropic potential into, into a social business model? It is just about how you invest the money. And of course, it has implication in terms of legal structure of, or how you organize yourself. Maybe you will need a different financial tool for you know, for getting the money back. But this is, uh, in a, let's say, in the next step. But, but let's say in, in the initial idea is just to change the mindset and the way uh, money is invested. So, it's, yeah, it's taking what exists and, and reshaping it. Absolutely. Okay. So we've got time for a couple more questions. I've got a, got a reply back from Stu. Thank you very much, Stu. Facebook, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, et cetera, Fangs. Perfect. Oh, um, yes. Okay. So... You know, the, the big tech companies, how, how, have you had any success in reaching out to them for, for, for such uh, projects? Uh, to be honest, no. Okay. <laughs> but, but Stu, if you have any good contact there, you know, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, but, but, but I, I do understand the, that this is a very good question because, uh, you know, they are at the center of the new economy and the way, uh, the, way uh, uh, the, the idea behind that whole concept of, of including more self-sustainability, more community-based relationship within the sport for development sector, this, this goes into the, that same direction. So it is, it is indeed extremely interesting uh, to, uh, to, to link both, uh, both uh, approach. So th there's the shout out, uh, Stu, and to anyone else who are listening, and perhaps anyone from any one of the fans that are watching today, um, please get in contact. It'd be great to have some ideas on, on how you can take those forward. Okay, so time for just two more. I'm just going to go to uh, Christine's question here. Um, is it part of the activities of the UNIS Sports Hub to advise and support NGOs and FPs uh, of the sport and development sector towards financial sustainability? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so this is something that we're launching at big scale. I, I cannot give too, too many details right now, but this is something that we're launching at big scale. And, and this is actually 
uh, as you say, uh, uh, as you you completely right, Christian. Uh, have you seen maybe during the presentation? This was one of the pillar. The third pillar was really how do we bring self sustainability to that uh, to that field? Um, and this is uh, this is uh, this is definitely part of our activities. Okay, great. So so watch this space. More news to come on that in that area. Um, okay, so I've got one more. Um, so one from uh, Phil Ferreira. Hi, Phil. Uh, hi, Juan. Uh, well done on Win Win Agora. Uh, love it. Uh, can you explain what is the initial seed investment uh, for land, sports field, gym? And uh, do you have plans to scale up from this first pilot? Absolutely. This is a, this is a program that uh, is already being scaled up actually 10 times in, uh, in Ivory Coast and, uh, and 90 more times in the next few, uh, few years. So it's already, uh, it's already uh, skyrocketing. Um, and in terms of the initial investment, that was uh, partly private and public uh, investment, uh, also some development, uh, some development money. So it's uh, it's a uh, it's really a it's at the crossroads of many many different interests as you can imagine. It's you know the sports sector. There's also you know the Ministry of Economy because it brings as well you know economic opportunity to the to people. Uh, so so it, it is a uh, it is a uh, it is financed by. Uh, development money uh, and different ministries and also private organizations. Okay, so great. I think we can follow up. on. There's a number of key points there to follow up on. Um, I'm going to have to say we've run out of time today. Um, we're running We're running a little bit over. So for those of you who have left other questions in the, in the chat, we will come back and answer all of these and all of these will be available in a forum um, dedicated specifically to this presentation today. Um, I just want to say, you know, you mentioned several times in uh, in your presentation, and especially at the start. You know, you you know presents as a, being a, a small player at the table, um, and I think you know I I really admire that humility, um, and I think it, it demonstrates also that we all can play a part. Um, you know, we've all got a, a small part to contribute, and we all can have we all have the potential to make a difference. So I would say, you know, to all of the audience, you know, my fellow colleagues as fellow sport workers and our contribution to sport, uh, whether they be events or administration, whatever that capacity, um, the opportunities are certainly there um, to be that small player at the table. Um, we all have that ability to to make that difference. And I think the, the example uh, being led by Professor Yunus and his team and Yuan uh, is certainly a, a great uh, example of that. So I want to say thank you again, Yuan. For coming and joining us, always an absolute pleasure to have you on, on with us uh, for our talks. Um, really, you know, uh, proud and, and, and really happy to, to to work and support as best we can uh, the work that you're doing. Uh, I think it's, it's it's really really important stuff. So thank you for joining us today. Um, I know so thank you especially to our participants from all around the world. Um, we trust that this was uh, gives you some great food for thought. Um, and helps you go forward in your day and looking at ways that you could perhaps look at triggering and, and, and uh, starting your own perhaps social business uh, to make that difference in the world. Of course, any questions you have, please feel free to come back to us uh, through sportworker.com or directly to Yuan. Uh, and we wish you all a very, very good day. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.